Okay, the observer, and I'm going to do the observer uh, today uh, mainly on uh, thoughts uh, and um, thoughts and uh, yeah, mainly on thoughts today, maybe. So <clears throat> the observer exercise. So the first thing to do with the observer exercise is to what I call you can calibrate by just seeing if there's an object in your room. So is there a, a mug on the table? Is there a, a chair in the room? Is there a, a lamp in the room? Well, observe, observe the object like this. If there's a mug, observe the mug, like there might be a mug, observe the mug. And as, you're, as it's the object is in front of you, notice that you're, the observer and the mug, the mug is not what you are. It is very, very clear that you are the, uh, you are the observer of the mug, which is an object, but the, uh, the mug, which is an object, is not what you are. So that becomes very, very clear. And that's a spiritual uh, experience. It's not a mental construct. It's not you thinking about it. That's your spiritual experience. When there's observing of a mug, it's very, very clear spiritually that the mug, the object, is not what you are. You are prior or you are before. Um, you're before the mug. And I think uh, St. Francis said this quite eloquently in his, probably one of his most famous quotes. What you're looking for is where you're looking from. So if there's a mug on the table, uh, you are not the object that's being observed. You are, you are the place that is observing it. Okay, so the next thing then, as you get that spiritual experience or that spiritual awakening that an object like a mug is not what you are, and there's a clear experience that a mug is nothing to do with what, who and what you are, the next thing is thoughts. Now thoughts are quite, um, uh, you know, are coming and going, and they're a bit like clouds in the sky, or they could be like uh, cars going across the street or clouds moving al along the thing, but they're, they are objects. Like if suddenly there's a, a mug on the table, that's an object which you, wasn't there and now it's there and then it can be gone. But you are the observer that sees the mug come and be there in front of you and then pass. So thoughts are discrete little objects. They can be a thought like the sky is blue or there can be a thought about uh, tomorrow or there can be a memory or whatever it is. These are little, little clouds that pass by. So like it's clear that you're not the uh, mug, mug on the table, are you the thoughts or are you the observer of the thoughts? So this is, this doesn't require mental, mentalization, doesn't require you thinking about it. Are you the observer of thoughts as, as, as an experience or are you the thoughts? And if you're a thought, can you be a thought? Like, a, are you a passing thought? That's one minute, it's not here, then it's here the next minute. Now thoughts pass by, so see if you can get the experience, if, if it's a, the first time for you, of being the witnesser or the observer of thoughts. So if you get that experience, what happens is there's a detached, you get this experience of clear detached space. And, and it's clear that the, the thoughts start to disappear as you go, as you become that, as you, as you sort of become the observer. In fact, no, no object, if you lose interest or don't identify with an object, if there's no hooking into an object, it starts to disappear. So you, you recognize that as you become the observer of thoughts, and then if you become the detached observer of thoughts, and if you become the observer uh, of thoughts, which has no care, no interest, gives no meaning to thoughts, you'll find that the thoughts will just start to disappear. It'll be almost like they don't exist. If they do exist, then you might have the experience that you are thoughts, or you might have the experience that there is observing of the thoughts, but the observer is interested in the thoughts or hooking into the thoughts. And so there seems to be enmeshment with an observer that is aware of thoughts. If that's the case, then be uh, this observer which is registering or hooking into thoughts or which is not detached from thoughts, be the observer of that observer. Be the observer of the observer that has interest in thoughts. Now, does this observer, is this observer 
in any way hooking in or registering or giving meaning to thoughts or even experiencing thoughts. And if it is, is there an observer of that observer? So as you go, as you go back into these inner states of observing and these inner states of observation without attachment or without any form of uh, hooking in or attachment or any type of meaning being given to objects, you start to experience an observer free of attachments or hooks or an observer that is not the head trying to analyze or register or give meaning to thoughts. So you're in that place before uh, the mechanisms of the, of the thought, of the thinking. Okay, now if there, if there was just thoughts that should clear uh, any sort of registering or hooking into thoughts, if there's an experience of body or feelings in the body, well, the body is also an object. Uh, it's just like a mug. You just be the observer. Can you be the observer of the object of the body? So what's observing the body? Can you be that? Can you be the witnesser of the body? If there's feelings, if there's fear, tiredness, um, exhaustion, if there's breathlessness, well, breathlessness is just like a, a is just like a, a moving cloud. Something observes breathlessness. There are times when there's no breathlessness and then there's breathlessness. So it's an object. But what is observing breathlessness? Is the observer or the witnesser of breathlessness breathless? So clear this up in your experience and you'll find that the observer of breathlessness is not breathless. Does the observer of time experience time? Is the observer of body a body? Is the observer of location uh, constricted by location. And if the observer or the witnesser has any form of limit, constriction, sense of separation, then what's observing that, that, that experience of limitation or separation or constriction? And is the observer of any constriction constricted or in separation? So let's just uh, spend a few moments just experiencing if what you are can be a thought or a body or any form of separation or constriction or limitation. And if you are experiencing any of those limitations, then see if there is a witnesser of that limitation. 